Hi everyone, um, so we should be live at the moment. Um, I can see Emma's chat there. Yeah, no, th th there's no noise when um, when the home screen's up on. So um, just going to leave it on the, the home page uh, for the moment while we let people join in. Uh, I've got my live stream of YouTube here. So hopefully I can see um, how many we've got coming in. Uh, and I should be able to keep a track of how many we've got. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to put this on the, I can see, see if I can see when we're coming on. Uh, yeah, Al, I can see you there. So that's great. Uh, Vicky Carter, is that new? Have you got, have you got sound now? If everyone can just say if they can hear me, just because I've got one right from the start there that someone couldn't have any sounds. If you can just let me know that you've got sound, that would be great. Thank you. I was down working with like a 15, well, I think probably a 30 second delay at the moment as well, just to make sure. Yeah, you got me. Okay, that's good. How's everyone doing? I hope you've all got your sets out in front of you, ready to go. Yeah, you can hear me. Great. Okay, that's good. So I think we'll just wait for um, wait for everyone to get on. We've got about 40 odd at the moment, so we're still waiting on about 30, again, 30 or 40 people. <laughs> I'm going to restart my YouTube link on here because it's way behind. Okay, that's good. So I know in the, um, the email that Jess sent out, um, they were obviously we're talking about when we get to the fir no, Virgin, uh, we're looking at doing potentially like a, a martini so, so I'm going to just drop back in and do that. Uh, just obviously, I know he's mentioned to get the martini. Uh, um, in terms of obviously what utensils to use, you know, I'm trying to do it on the basis where you guys would have what you have. So, anything like a clear stirring vessel. Uh, I've got glass here as I'm using. I'm using a knife as my bar spoon. So something simple like that. Um, any kind of. Um, measure i mean generally if you're going to join in in the martini then you won't be making your gin and tonic at that point just um goes through that um keep your full measure ready to do the martini and that way you can just pour shake from your uh, pouch into the the mix uh, if not then you can always use i've got these cooking spoons that have measures on another good way of doing it um and something to stop the ice when you strain from your stirring vessel into a, a martini glass if you have it uh, wine glass should be fine as well if you need to make do uh, and obviously your vermouth which we're only really using five to ten mils so i hope you didn't go out and buy a massive bottle <laughs> but then you can make loads of martinis at home so that's fine that's fine uh right how are we doing numbers wise we've got uh nearly 50 but we i know we've got quite a few people watching from the same house i need to take that into account as well yeah i think we'll give it another minute or so and then uh, we'll get on there Just check up what Ben on as well, because I know we had yeah, what Ben there, perfect. Okay. A little bit few many in here, so it's good. Let me know, you guys are in here. I uh, haven't seen Anthony yet. Uh, Anthony Groom. Uh, 
Should be on by now. Okay. Right, well, we'll, um, I'll start just running through some stuff while I'm catching. I can still see the names joining in, so we'll see from here. Um, so again, welcome to um, our Navy Gins tasting, uh, this time round uh, from Tomoka. Uh, again, always start with a, a massive thank you to everyone for your support. Um, huge uh, numbers of tastings going out, which is just um, it's, it's fantastic. And it's not just local to our shop as well. We've got people joining us from Edinburgh, uh, down in Cornwall, Leicester, Manchester, all over, which is just uh, yes, fantastic. Um, and we're always going to keep bringing you these um, as long as we can and uh, trying to think of new, new things. Um, we've also got, um, and next week we've got the final red taste, which is already sold out. And then we have the uh, rum taste on the Saturday. Um, and then we've got the summer gin, which is coming on the 23rd of May, which is a week after the Swedish whiskey, which we have on the following week. Um, tickets for the summer are still available. I did only um, put availability this week just to the mailing list as a bonus for you guys um, having our mailing list. Um, so there is no tickets available until half of this tasting the public. Um, and I would say actually this time half of those tickets have already gone. So a lot of you regulars have already picked up on that as well. Uh, rum sold out yesterday. Um, and again, that was only just to the, the email database. Uh, and we, we, we kind of knew that was going to happen because there was a lot of demand in the first place for the rum. So I've now released uh, last night uh, and we're going to kind of release it in waves just to make sure that we can, we can handle the, the serves um, and the shipping. And um, then after that, yeah, then, then we've got the, the summer one. Uh, there's still plenty for the whiskey as well, for the Swedish whiskey, if anyone's interested. Uh, that's on the 16th of May. We're going to be hosted here in Wyoming, Myra. We did our first one, um, but uh, and then we'll, we'll launch it. But the only thing that won't happen in this evening, which we have done on the last ones, is we'll have an email that will go out uh, at the end, uh, obviously advertising the next tastings. At the moment, you guys are all aware of which tastings we have. Uh, I will send out a reminder email tomorrow, just obviously where's linked if anyone hasn't got a ticket so far. Um, and then we'll launch uh, another couple of tastings next week. Uh, we are looking at doing a cognac. We're just finalizing details on that. Um, and we'll be looking at another gin after that summer one. Um, those of you that don't know too much information in terms of the, the summer gin tasting itself, we're actually been looking at alternate serves. So we're touching a little bit on it today uh, with the, the pink gin later on. And we start with a very basic um, cocktail. And then with the, the summer gin, we're going to be looking at a, a gin and tonic. Uh, a gin and alternate serve, and then two um, cocktail serves. So we're just getting into that kind of summer spirit. Um, we will send out an email uh, just through little bits that you might need to buy. Um, but we're going to try and make it as, as general, as simple as possible. As we can do. And um, I think that's it on the stumble, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's generally it. And we look at the numbers. So we've got up to 50. I think that's about right. I think that's about right, bearing in mind on the numbers. Um, let me, so what I'm going to do is, with the tasting again tonight, it's going to run the same as uh, always. Jessica is going to take us through uh, some fantastic gins. We've got some guests in tonight as well. Um, I have to take myself off screen <laughs> to get, we only have three at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just run through. We have Jess, uh, obviously doing the main ones. We've got uh, Mark, who's head of sales from Tarquins. He's uh, kindly giving up his evening to come and uh, jump online with us. And we've also got Ben. Uh, from the fantastic campfire gin in Cream, which a lot of you guys might know because it is local to us. Uh, and again, he's given up his time this evening to to come on and um, talk about his fantastic gin. Um, what I will do now is I'm just going to bring Jas on. Uh, let's bring Jas into the mix. We'll hide that. Hello, Jas. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Um, so I'm just explaining. If you just want to just do a, a a quick intro before you want to get going with the um, your side of the tasting. Uh, I'm just going to take myself off, and then if you can just introduce uh, Mark and Ben, I'll bring them on screen with you, um, and I'll whip back on quickly before you get going. Okay, cool. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, welcome. 
a lot of seasoned people, so a lot of people that have uh, come to our tastings before. Uh, we've got some guests appearing as usual. So Mark is on screen at the moment. Hey, Mark, he's head of sales at Tarquins. And we're joined by Ben, who's uh, the owner and distiller and uh, everything at, at the Campfire Gin. So they'll be joining us um, very, very shortly. Um, but yeah, so, so for our tasting today, we've got uh, four fantastic gins. Um, and I know we have some new people coming, uh, joining us today. So um, for those of you perhaps who are new and we're expecting gins um, and, and expecting fluffy clouds and rainbows, uh, you're in for a surprise because uh, today is all about uh, gins are distilled at 57%. So they pack a punch. They also pack a lot of flavor and um, they are absolutely amazing. You've got to get past the strength and it starts getting really good. But don't worry because I'm here. I'll walk you through it. I'll talk you through it. I'll hold your hand and we'll, we'll guide through together. And uh, believe me, at the end of it, you'll be you'll be loving it and you'll wish you tried Navy Strength gins, gins before. So, um, you know, here we like to we like to rock the boat um, and we're going all out nautical with the with these Navy Strengths and including the best gin in the world um, from 2017 as well. So uh, look out for that. Um, but. Let me tell you about Navy Strength. Why, why Navy? Well, Navy Strength, its roots are deeply embedded in the history of gin. Um, and, and it's essential to, to where gin is today. Um, in the 1700s, the Royal Navy, uh, by legislation of the Royal Navy, were, were required to have gin on the ships when they set sail uh, to new pastures um, and, and exploring the world. So uh, the reasons were a number of reasons because... They they would help um, well keep keep morale of of the officers. Um, they also were there to help them cure. Well, it was believed that gin was a cure for various types of diseases, so uh, it was there for medicinal purposes, and also it served part of their their daily ration. So they're actually paid a little bit in in gin. Um, so some of the officers uh, got a bit wise and thought they were getting shafted uh, on on their gin. So they would ask the captains to um, prove prove that the gin was was gin, and, um, and the way to do that was to pour some gin onto the gunpowder, set it on fire, and if it was 100% gin, 100% proof, um, then the 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 gunpowder would burn, and that's how in those days they would prove that the gin was 100%. Uh, it wasn't until uh, Sykes hydrometer in 1800s, 1820, 16, something like that, um, that they were actually able to then uh, measure ABV and the alcoholic content in gin. Uh, but up until that point, in order to make sure your gin was gin, you had to literally set it on fire. And if it lit, it, it was it was gin. Um, so it's very much ingrained within the story of the Navy. And actually, the Navy only stopped serving gin in 1970, I think it was, around, around that sort of time. Maybe one of our guests later will, will confirm that. Um, it was around that sort of time. So it was a really sort of recent, uh, it was a thing that was quite quite ingrained in their tradition. And it was only because the Navy was becoming uh, more, more um, you know, computerized and it wasn't, you know, lots of drunk sailors and it wasn't part of the, the image of the Navy anymore. Uh, so that's kind of where gin, gin sort of takes us. Um, it wasn't until 93, 1993, when a guy called John Murphy, who was master, dis um, sorry, who was head of marketing at Plymouth, Plymouth Gin, which I'm sure many of you would know. Um, and it wasn't until 93 when he coined the phrase Navy strength. So up until that point, it was really widely known as 100 percent proof gin, which wasn't really something that uh, a lot of distillers could sell. It wasn't a, an attractive. It was quite scary as a, as a as a name. So he coined the phrase Navy strength. And it's kind of then stuck um, up until today. And it's now become its own category. Um, so as I said, these genes really, really pack a punch. They carry a lot of weight. Um, and yeah, don't go in, don't go in blind because it will make you, it could make you blind. It's uh, they, they have a lot of high content. It has to be fifty-seven percent or above to be a navy strength gin. Um, and and the reason why it's become a bit of a 
you know, I guess, I guess it's sort of become more widely available and more widely accepted by by gym fans um, because it's it's something that bartenders like to use. Bartenders, you know, as bartenders, we like to we like to use uh, flavors. We like to use ingredients that have a pack of flavor that you can mix that are going to make up a composition of a cocktail or a, or, or a particular drink you want to make, and you're getting those elements come through. And Navy Strength just helps with that. It, th those those flavors at 57 percent just come through, um, and it's through through the bartenders that obviously the consumer and you, the public, um, start seeing the benefits of what Navy Strength does and and how you can use it in your drinks. So we're going to be covering a whole range of things today. Um, you know, we're going to play around with with a cocktail for those of you that are feeling brave. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mix it with some really interesting tonics and take the gin to a different place. So almost playing around with that that sort of cocktail thing without being so much cocktail. Um, in terms of what you need today, um, most of you, I know there's a couple of you that didn't, but most of you will have received the email with the list of garnishes. So you should have yourself an orange, uh, you should have yourself a grapefruit, uh, a lemon, a piece of lime, um, some lemongrass, if you could get it, it's completely optional, but you know you could use it later. Uh, also some bay leaf, if you have some, and some rosemary, which I have forgotten, I have to get from my garden. Um, so I'll have to do that in a second. Um, and was there some thyme? Um, but you know, some of these things will be sort of. If you haven't got bay leaf, then we can use thyme. If you haven't got rosemary, you know, we'll find we'll find other things amongst what we have uh, to, to mix it up. But really, as long as you've got those citrus fruits and some of those other ingredients, it's going to be good. So let's um, let's go on to our first gin um, and and show you what Navy Strength is all about. Um, the first one we got is sachet number one in your in your packs. Uh, we've got the Q Explorer Strength Gin. It's a really nice looking bottle. Uh, they've actually changed the design. It looked much nicer, uh, in my opinion, previously, but, but it still looks good. Um, and this is a Q uh, Organic Explorer Strength Gin. Um, so the story behind Q is that uh, back in the days when I told you about the Navy and, and the gin and so on, um they're really on a mission to explore the world you know discover new continent new new countries and so on um and they took botanists from kew garden onto the ships with them as part of the exploration missions um and they were there to do research on flora and fauna um and and they they were there to discover new species and and document them and take them back to kew um so the Q Explore Strength Gin is really something that also sits in the history of gin. So I, I wanted to add it into this tasting because it kind of it's it's something that is part of the whole story. Um, so this is well, they say completely organic. Um, it's made by the London Distillery Company, who are based in Battersea, and they 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 they're right next door to Q. So Q Garden said, you know, would you like to make us a gin? You can use some of the botanicals from from our gardens. Um, and you have the juniper that you can buy, and they bought other ingredients, etc. But the really, you know, is representation of of Kew Garden and the history of Kew. And um, so even the paper here um, is kind of in the style of the archives that sit in Kew. Um, and and the, the you know the font is all in in the font of the archives as well. So they really kind of kept true to what what was happening in history at that sort of time. So that's our Kew. Let's uh, maybe go for a little sample. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, with regards to glassware, I'm going to be using tasting glass as always. A lot of you that have been to our tastings before will have heard the spiel, um, but the tasting glass is quite important in order to be able to sample and taste the spirits. So we're not looking to make a G&T necessarily. We're looking to let the spirit talk. We're looking to let, you know, get flavors out of the spirit, pick out its noses, pick out its flavors and tastes. And then we're looking to uh, take it to another level with the garnishes and the and the tonics that we that we add. So I'm using tasting glass. If you have a tasting glass like this, great. If you don't, uh, then you have a number of options. Another really good option is is a wine glass like this, a slightly smaller wine glass rather than a sort of a big big wine glass, um, just because it has that nice wide base to it, um, but it also is quite slim and quite short. So you know the spirit 
stays stays with you. You don't you don't lose it. It doesn't kind of get lost in the air. Although at fifty seven percent, you're probably not going to lose too much. Um, but if you're making gin and tonics, then I, I always use a wine glass as well when I'm making a gin and tonic, or maybe a glass like that, which I think is pretty good. Um, the thing I don't like to use is those big copper glasses that uh, everyone seems to be using these days. For me, it just doesn't work. The gin, the tonic, the ratio is all completely wrong. Um, and so I would encourage you maybe to to maybe go back to a highball or, or a wine glass, which is what I do. So let's pour half the sachet. Okay, you all have a sachet of one, two, three, and four. Um, or, so pour half of it into the glass. Okay, that's number one, sachet number one. Okay, and we're going to swirl it around like we would a wine. Okay, and the purpose of this is to let oxygen into the spirit, let it breathe, let it open up. You don't want to get hit with that, that alcohol, uh, which inevitably you probably will. Um, so let's, let's give ourselves a little hand and a little help by giving it a swirl around like that. And then going with your nose and, and just give it a swirl, so, uh, give it a little nose and see what you're getting. Some of you are going to get that punch of alcohol. It's going to put you off straight away. But like I said, you know, it's probably the first drink of the evening. So you're going to get hit with the alcohol straight away. But after a while, it's going to settle down and, and it just starts getting really aromatic. You're going to get these flavors of, of you know, citrusy notes, maybe a hint of spice in there with some bay leaf. Um, it's got 15 botanicals. So it's got, you know, a good level of complexity. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's there's a lot of pepperiness in there as well. Uh, I'm just going to see if any of you are making some comments, see if you can hear anything or if I'm just talking rubbish. Uh, but do let me know. Um, and then we're going to go for a little sip. OK, we're going to try every one of these neat and then we're going to add tonic to them. So what I suggest you do is to just take a little sip, leave it on the tip of your tongue, just kind of let it sit there. Get used to the alcohol. Get used to the strength of the alcohol, and then, um, and then, you'll kind of prepare yourself for a bigger, a bigger explosion. But that little, that little sip is going to be enough. Trust me. Okay. So, as well as yeah, exactly. Who said that? Who said pepper? Ali, good boy. Ali comes out with Sarah, also pepper. You get that pepper, it's there, that fire. And that's also kind of uh, perpetuated by the strength of the alcohol. Um, what is it, 57.3, so 57.3. Um, yeah, um, and so then you let it sit there and you start getting this kind of sweet spice characters. Um, you get a bit of this herby, herby notes coming through. Maybe, maybe rosemary, perhaps. Um, but now we're going to go for a little bit of a larger sip. And what I'm going to say to you, or I should have said, actually, on your larger sip, you want to hold it in your palate and let the saliva start breaking down the alcohol. And what that's going to is naturally going to do that, right? Your mouth is naturally going to produce saliva to counter that punch. And that's naturally going to break down the spirit, take it down to more of a, um, a, a palatable strength. Um, and then you start getting all these other flavors. OK, so so, uh, yeah, and Cedric says really lovely. So let's try that again. So we're going to go hold the spirit in your mouth just a touch. Right. Let let your let your mouth do its thing. It's naturally going to want to fight that 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 um, ABV. When you do that, suddenly it starts becoming a bit more floral. You still get that lovely fire, and that's always there. But you start get oh, and it really comes through. That, that kind of ginger, that pepperiness is really there, black pepper. And then, and you get these other flavors. Now we're gonna add the tonic, and the tonic we're going for, like I said, with navy strength, 
you can do things with the, the spirit. You, you know, you can play around and you won't lose it. So we're going to add uh, the London Essence. There you go. Uh, pomelo and uh, pepper, pink pepper. So the idea here is that I've gone for a tonic that has complements of the citrus, but also has that pink pepper. Now, although we're getting black pepper in, in this particular gin, essentially it's the pepper that we want. So we're going to add that into gin. Now, before you go in with your tonic, normally I say for tasting purposes, you want to add double the amount of tonic to your gin. So if you've got 20%, 20 mil of gin in your glass, you want to add about 40 mil of tonic, okay? But because it's navy strength and it's quite a new thing for, for many of you, I'm sure, um, you can add a bit more, okay? Um, add, add a touch more and then do it to taste. Don't drown it because, we, we, you know, we want to taste it, right? We, we still want to make sure that we're getting those flavors. So don't drown it, but just add a bit more than, say, say, Three, you know, 60 mil of tonic to start with um, if you've got 20 mil of gin. Okay, let's give it a swirl around again. Let, let that tonic infuse and marry into the gin. Go back in with the nose. I think a bit too, too much tonic. Okay. More rosemary when it, yeah, Tim's getting more rosemary when it stays in the mouth and floor. And I was, absolutely, I, I, I totally agree. Emma um, Cedric's getting rose. Interesting. Okay. So that, that's probably maybe from licorice. Um, so, okay. So what are we thinking? We've added the tonic. It's opened up a little bit. You're still getting the gin. That, that pepperiness has now kind of gone back a little bit. Um, and you're getting more of that lovely pine, that lavender from the juniper. Um, and you're getting more of those natural kind of floral notes that are in, in the botanical mix. Um, let me know what you're thinking. Yeah, don't drown it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you. Don't drown it. Okay, be safe. I, I have drowned it, unfortunately. But it's still good. Still getting the flavor. Now with this, we're going to add some of our lemons. So what I want you to do Again, some of you that have been to our tastings will, will know this. Um, and for those of you that are new, what I want you to do is take the skin, right? You just want to take the skin of the, the, the citrus fruit. We're not looking to cut wedges, okay, because we don't want the acidity to come into the drink. We want the skin, and I'll just do a quick demo. So you want the skin, right? You want to cut a little piece like that, right? And you're going to hold it over your glass like this, okay? And your two fingers and your thumb, and hold your glass and just squeeze it out over the top of the glass. Now, what you've got is these oils that have come through, okay? The flavor is all in the peel, and you get these lovely oil, uh, oily, lemony, citrusy notes that are in this peel, and they'll just come into the glass, drop that in, okay? And you're gonna, it's just gonna take the drink to another level, right? With this, we're also gonna add, if you've got bay leaf, great. We're gonna add a bit of bay leaf, okay? Just give it a little, a little grapefruit. Yeah, uh, you know what, add grapefruit, absolutely. Yeah, Emma, who said that, who said that? Emma, grapefruit, yeah, if you wanna do grapefruit, yeah, please, go ahead. I've chosen lemon because we're gonna use grapefruit later on, so I wanted to do something else. Um, but bay leaf, drop that in as well. Give it, like I said, give it a little pinch. If you haven't got bay leaf, go with the thyme, a little, little bit of thyme. Um, if you haven't got thyme, then maybe, um, you know, try some of the rosemary or, 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 or well, if you've got anything else, maybe a little bit of ginger, okay? Uh, the, the point is that we want to bring out some of that citrusy note and we want to add something that is going to complement some of that herby or pepperiness. So, okay, more floral with the tonic and citrus, but still warmth and pepper. Okay, yeah, good. So I'm not getting too much of the pepper syrup, but obviously we, we want different palettes. We will get different notes. Um, and maybe, like I said, I drowned out the gin a little bit, a little bit. So I've lost some of that pepper. Okay, so how is it now? You've added the garnish. You've added that pink grapefruit tonic um, with the pink pepper hit. Um, and then we've added the bay leaf or some sort of spice or herb with, with the citrus. Okay, so again, it's reacted with the drink, it's reacted with the tonic and the and the gin, which is giving a bit more flavor, a bit more depth.
I've added grapefruit as it will have that, and it's all I have, and it works. Of course, yeah, absolutely, it will work. Absolutely, it will work. Um, so you know, orange, grapefruit, lemons, you know, lime. They they will all they will all work in some way. A lot of these gins are going to have a lot of citrus behind it. So as long as you're emphasising some of that citrus, it's good. Um, but the, the key thing to remember is that you don't really want to use, you know, like a slice or a wedge of the fruit because, in my opinion, you're adding acidity, acidity, acidity to the drink, and that sort of offsets the balance in in some cases. So by adding the oil of the skin, you're still getting that flavour, um, and it's and it's not offsetting the drink. But it's adding, it's actually enhancing, enhancing the drink. So yeah, you know, if you want to add grapefruit, absolutely fine. Um, yeah, but look, let us know how it tastes. Let us know your thoughts. Um, I think it's good. Still getting all those lovely flavors. Like I said, some of that pepperiness, you know, dies down a little bit, but still, still really good. And then, if you want to add ice, go ahead. Look, add ice now tasting part of that you know we've kind of you want to taste it at, at room temperature so you're not drowning and sort of you know closing those flavors so if you want to add ice to it perfect go ahead um and and make a really nice gin and tonic you still have obviously half the sachet um so so and you know you still have a bit of tonic so so go ahead and make yourselves a gin tea after this and uh yeah message us let us know what you think um lawrence i also really like the lovely color of the tonic yeah yeah, and you know what? Sometimes you know we see, we eat, we drink with our eyes. So if the, if the drink looks appealing, um, you're more likely already. You're kind of halfway there. You're thinking, I'm going to enjoy it even more. Yeah, good. Look, everyone, I'm glad you really like it. That's our cue. Uh, for me, a really nice gin. Their their regular strength is also lovely, but that's bottled at 46. percent As a distillery, you know the London Distillery Company, they like to do things at a higher strength. Some of you were here when we did the boatyard. Uh, from Northern Ireland, um, Joe McGear used to actually work at the London Distillery and and sort of helped Dodds in its um, in its infancy. Um, so you know they and Boatyard is also at forty six percent as well. So you know they kind of like to play with those bigger bigger ABVs anyway. So the Explorer strength was just a normal a normal thing. Tim's given an eight out of ten. Love it, Tim. Yeah, nice. Uh, also tastes great. Yeah. With with uh, with lime, yeah. So look, like I said, all these citrus flavors are going to work, but take it to another level. Add add something to it. So you know, here we added the bay leaf or the thyme. Uh, you know, piece of ginger would be amazing with it as well. Um, so, so add something to it. Um, so that's our first gin. Hope you love it. Hope the world of navy strength isn't too scary. Um, you know, it's about the flavor. The navy strength, like I said, at that strength, you get all these lovely top notes. Um, and we're going to see some of that with our next gin. Uh, so I'm going to introduce. So this is a campfire. It's, it's our, one of our local gins made, you know, uh, we're in St. Albans. Uh, this is made in Chilton Hills, just near Tring. Um, and I'm really, really uh, proud to introduce you to the head distiller and owner of this particular gin. Um, his name is Ben. And he should be joining us now from his distillery. Magic. Do we have Ben? Do we have a Ben? Okay, well, while we wait for Ben, I will tell you some about Campfire. So uh, Campfire's Navy Strength again. Um, these guys actually launched in round about 2016. Hey, Ben, how are you? Have we got you? We've got sound? I can't hear you. Can we hear? Can we hear him? The beauty of live, live, uh, live tastings. Hello. Do we have you, Ben? I can see you. I just can't hear you. Can anyone, Shane? Can we hear him? I'm just going to come in because you no, know, I can't. I can't hear him either. Uh, ben, if you're there, if you just come out of the B live and maybe come back in, so it activates your microphone because at the moment, yeah, we can't hear. 
Okay, so while we do that, um, let me tell you about Campfire. Um, it's a really nice gin. Um, they're not they're not really using all your basic kind of botanicals. They've, they've kind of gone with, you know, a little bit different. It's going to make their own little mark in the gin world. Um, it's a fantastic looking bottle as well. Um, it's actually a silver, silver award winning gin. Um, their regular dry was last year given the best gin, uh, best gin for a gin martini in the world. Um, and, and, you know, these guys really do it well. Uh, we've, we've been, we've been, uh, well, I served them in my bar when I had, when I had my cocktail bar, when they, when they first launched, we've been stocking them in the shop. Um, and they, they have a really nice range of gins, but we're tasting the Navy strength today. Uh, ben, do we have you? No. Ah! <laughs> One sec. Are you going through your phone? Maybe go through your phone. Okay. So, um, Campfire Gin, sachet number two in your sachets. Uh, if you want to start pouring it out, like I said, let's do half um, of your sachet. I love this gin. I absolutely love it. And it comes uh, it comes in a 500 ml bottle, so it's their own. You know, again, there's not another bottle that I've seen that, that is this sort of uh, this shape, this size. So it's a little bit different, um, and it makes it stand out on the shelf as well. Their Christmas gin is also fantastic. While we're waiting, uh, give it a swirl in the glass, as we said before. Let those flavours open up. So Ben, actually, um, I believe I believe it was 2016, I think, um, when when he started this with his wife, this company, um, and they they started in one liter stills, just these little little stills like this, um, and you can buy them, you know, you can buy them online. They ship them out from Portugal, um, and he just started playing around uh, with gins, with botanicals, and and sort of working out his recipe. And then uh, they upscaled and they got crowdfunding, which allowed them to actually build their, their distillery in, in, in just on, you know, near Tring. Um, and they, they actually had some issues because what they realized um, was that the, the botanical mix and the ratio of botanicals that they were distilling at one litre in that still didn't just work to just upscale the quantities by the same amount and and represents the gin that you have at the end, right? So, because they're then expanding the gin, um, you know, the quantity of the gin, they had to then go back to the drawing board and and then start reconfiguring the botanical mix to make it work. Um, but they, they got around it, they raised their money um, and they managed to build their still. And, and for those of you that are local here and you haven't been to the distillery, you can absolutely book a tour um and they'll take you around um they do master classes as well kind of what, what similar to what we're doing obviously when when the lockdown's lifted um you definitely want to check it out if you can um but let's let's maybe go have a little nose of the gin so swirl it around going through the nose now again you're going to get that fire right you're going to get the fire of the alcohol Maybe, it's, you know, step away from it a touch and just let it kind of make its way to you. <laughs> Emma says you'll keep the, the bin for a handbag. Love it. Um, and you're going to get that lovely kind of citrusy note. You're going to get hit with that pine, that juniper that's, that's coming through. And then there's this lovely sort of peppery note as well. So it's quite a common theme with Navy Strength gins that they, they tend to have this lovely pepperiness. Um, and when you when you distill at 57%, you're getting all these top notes, right? And that's one of the really important things about gin. It's not just about the extra strength, right? It's not just about the same recipe that you've just, um, you know, bottled at a higher strength and therefore it's just a stronger gin. It's, it's really not. It's, it's a different blend of botanicals so other things can sing through because at 57 percent you're going to get other things that naturally are going to come through so you get that pepperiness you get all these top notes that you miss 
at 40, 41, 42, 3 um, percent. So so it's really good in that sense to, to play around with that Navy strength and see if you can get all these additional flavors. Hey, Ben, are we working? No, I can't hear you. If you'll speak, if you've got, um, is your microphone? Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Shane, what can we do? Ben's trying to reset his system. He's there with us. So maybe what we'll do is hold that in your glass right now. We're going to come back to it. I'll move on to Pickering, see if we can sort that situation out with Ben. And uh, and then we'll, we'll come back, right? So let's let's put that onto one side. Pour into another glass if you have to, if you're using the same glass. We'll move on to option number three, our gin number three. Um, and then we'll come back to Ben and, and move on to move on to Tarquins in a bit. Um, Shane, let's see if we can sort that out and I'll, I'll move on to gin number three. Cool. Okay, guys, so uh, technical errors. So we're going to move on to gin number three. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, gin number three is Pickering. Okay, we had this a couple of weeks ago, but we had the uh, the original 1947 recipe. So if you missed that, it's definitely one to try. Really spicy. It's just a naturally spicy gin. Um, but this is the Pickering Navy Strength, which in my opinion is, is the best in the range. And I think I said that at the time. Um, don't be sad, Ben. <laughs> don't worry, you'll be back. Um, so look, Pickering's um, is made in Scotland. It's the first new distillery of gin for 150 years in Scotland, based in Edinburgh, started in 2013. Uh, two partners, a guy called uh, Marcus Pickering and his business partner, Matthew Gemmell. Um, Gemmell's an engineer, so he set about creating the distillery, uh, building the distillery um, and doing all that engineering based around the practicalities of what what the distillery needs to have and what it looks like and how they're going to make gin. And Marcus um, had the recipe. So Marcus is, uh, I believe it was his granddad or great grandfather, um, was serving in the Indian Army, um, in the British Army in India. Um, and he was given this, this gin recipe, um, which was an old... Mumbai recipe. It's a Bombay recipe, not Bombay the drink, but Bombay the location. They used to have their own style of gin. And um, he was given, his granddad was given this recipe on a sheet of paper. Now, you can still see that sheet of paper. They have it hanging in the distillery. If you go to our website, craftgins.co.uk, and you go to the Pickering's webpage um, on our website, you'll see an image of the actual original piece of paper. Um, it's, in a, it's in a frame sitting on top of the, uh, above the door. Uh, was that number three? Uh, yeah, that's one. Yeah, um, and you'll see it sitting uh, above the door, and um, and it's a really nice story. So that recipe was hidden for sixty six years until twenty thirteen when Marcus found it when they were going to make a gin, and and they decided to use that recipe. Now the original recipe, which we all tasted a couple of weeks ago, was way too strong, way too curry like uh, for for kind of the modern day market. Um, Glenn's just saying, yeah, they, they, they had the pick and gin, gin baubles. Yep. Uh, it was a great idea for Christmas time. Um, so this Navy strength gin, uh, was second in their range. So they took the 47 recipe. It was way too strong, not right for the Monday palette. Uh, they thought, so they downplayed it, took some things out, added some things in and created a pick and gin. They then created the Navy strength off the back of it. And like I said, this for me is the best gin uh, in their range. So we're going to go with our number three, half the sachet into your glass. <clears throat> right now, now I said earlier that Navy Strength gins give you that pepperiness, that flavor, right? Now Pickering as a style is all about that flavor, right? It's an Indian recipe. So naturally you're going to have cinnamon, you're going to have cardamom, you're going to have, you know, um, star anise you're gonna have all these cloves and curry kind of classic sort of curry notes um so they're going to be there but you're going to get that lovely citrusiness so let's let's swirl it around in our glass you know we're going to open it up you can see the legs down the glass as well so you wait a second 
you kind of see the legs start rolling down and that gives you an idea of the sugar gives you an idea of the consistency the oiliness um and let's go in with a nose ali bought a bottle after a gin after a gin tasting yeah maybe that was our, was that our gin tasting yeah tim's getting the, some of that vanilla which is coming from that sweet spice um let me know let me know let your comments some of you newbies let me let me hear you uh what you're getting she be getting um definitely getting more spice kind of natural spice as part of the botanical mix uh, a little bit of fennel the sort of star anise kind of notes aniseedy notes definitely getting that, that citrus as well um like I said, let's go for a little tip, uh, a little tip on your tongue and kind of just let it coat over your palate and see see what you're getting out of it Mm -mm -mm. packing a punch even for me it's kind of making its way up through the back of my nose but it's good it's really good nice and fiery nice and peppery it's just part of it it's just part of it um <laughs> ben we have sound excellent um so right now slow down with this particular gin here we're going to make a martini so if any of you have vermouth and it, you know um, you want to try it with a martini and it's absolutely amazing then don't add the tonic which we're about to do now um, for those of you that aren't so brave and maybe aren't used to the strength and want to kind of get used to it then we're going to add the tonic and our garnish um, but like i said definitely if, if you're used to it and you love the idea of having a martini it's absolutely amazing so we're going to cross over to chain in a second to do that martini but for you that want to add the tonic stay with me uh, we're going to go in with our martini, uh, sorry, with our gin. We're going with the light tonic, okay? Uh, we're going to use this twice today, um, so don't use it all. Uh, this is a light tonic. Uh, I've gone for a light. There's a number of different tonics I could go gone for. Even the, the pomelo, we could have gone for aromatic, uh, which would be a really good choice. But we kind of, you know, we've done that a few times. So let's let's use something different. Uh, you know the gin at, at this strength is is packed of flavor anyway so sometimes you don't need to enhance that flavor sometimes you just have to say you know what i'm going to let the gin do its talking i'm just going to add this light tonic the light tonic why because again at 57 percent the spirit in my opinion tends to be a little bit sweeter it carries a bit more sugars with it um and so sometimes you want to add a light tonic just to sort of counter that sweetness yeah so I'm not going to have a lot this time. So I'm going in with a, with a little bit of tonic, a very little bit of tonic, as you can see. Okay. And then going with your nose again, see how some of that, that, that tonic is bringing out some of these uh, other flavors that were maybe hidden uh, as, as a, as a closed gin. Give it a swirl. Yeah. Now for me, for me, I'm definitely getting a bit more citrus come through. I'm definitely getting, some of that kind of pink grapefruit and i'm getting a little bit of sweet spice as well when i say sweet spice i'm talking cinnamon I'm talking star anise i'm talking vanillas as a you know as opposed to kind of big spicy cloves cardamoms but you will get some of that cardamom um and cloves kind of sitting there so let's try it let's try it with the tonic now mm. Yeah, for me, it's really good. It's still it's still packing a punch, you know, um, that, that strength has gone down and it's opening up all these other, other flavors. Um, with this, we're going to add a bit of lime. OK, so we've got a lime piece here. We're doing exactly the same thing as we did before. Um, we're going to go with the skin, right, as opposed to the, the, the actual flesh. And uh, with the lime, it's a little bit harder because you don't, it doesn't allow you to really squeeze it unless you've got a really nice thick piece of lime. Um, so we're just gonna squeeze it like that over the glass and just drop it in, yeah? Now again, that's just taking it to another level. 
with that lo lovely citrusy lime. Lime has a really good flavor. And, uh, and it just brings out all these kind of, you know, it just works with that citrusy flavor. Uh, Scout says it's my favorite so far. Mm. So it's really good. You know what? I'm going to have to a bit more gin because even though I did a little tiny bit, I love it so much. Okay. So let me know. Let me know what you think. Scouts is a favorite so far. Emma said you're saying basil. I'm not getting the basil, but like I said, everyone's different. There's definitely some herby notes in there. There's some savory notes in there. Uh, if you want, you could, you know, I bought those little, you know, the, in Sainsbury's they do these little um, Thai herbal kind of kits. Um, and, I'll, you know, in there is a little uh, lime leaf. That's where I've also got my lemongrass from as well. Um, they're good little kits, you know, you can use them in cooking, but they also sit in the back there and you can, you know, loads of botanicals in there to add in and flavor up your gin. So, you know, you can smack a piece of that in there, drop that in as well if you want. You know, but it's about picking out the flavors. Don't just add like berries to it because it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit odd. Um, you want to work with the flavors of the gin. So if the gin, you know, has got some pepperiness, I would say maybe add a citrus to, you know, to bring out some of those citrus notes and then add something to complement that spice if that's what you bring out. So last time we had this, we used orange and ginger, which worked really well uh, to bring out some of those flavors. So think about the gin try it and then kind of see what what you need to add and and shops like ours smoke experience craft gins you know that's what we're there for we you know our customers that come to us they say you know what can i add to this gin how will i best serve it we give our recommendation based on our experience and you know and they love it because uh, they'll come back and say you know what? it was absolutely amazing thank you so um that's our pickering gin what do you think shane's going to cross over now to those of you that want to be brave um, and he's going to show you how we're doing a martini with it. Yeah, I'm going to take you off for a sec, Jess, just so I can go full screen. Hi, everyone. Yep. Yeah, so like we said, if you want to be a bit braver, we're going to go martini style. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much time because obviously we definitely need to get Ben back on um, after the mishap there. Um, now, I've tried to not be, you know, we do cocktails for a living as well. I don't want to go to my van and get all this equipment out, which no one's got at home. So um, I've got, don't judge me. I've got a glass vessel. Uh, my other half's obsessed with zebras, so it's zebra printed. Um, so we're going to use that as the actual vessel. Now, one thing I did beforehand was I chilled my glass in the freezer, but I've also put some crushed ice. So I've just taken some cubed ice, put it in a bag, got a mallet, smashed it up, and that's my crushed ice to be able to chill the glass to the perfect temperature. Um, that also helps. One of the reasons why there's always this big argument about shaking and stirring martinis um you know people say it needs to be shaken to get the drink down to the right temperature you know it's i guess if you're james bond you'd argue that fact um the general rule of thumb i guess is if your alcohol contains uh your cocktail contains essentially just booze it's generally a stirred cocktail so that's one of the reasons why um, a martini is best served stirred and especially if you're having a gin martini now um there's a term called bruising, where if you're shaking the gin in, in a shaker, you're kind of going to bruise the botanicals. And a lot of those flavors you're expecting to find in the martini are going to be kicked out the window. So it's always best to stir a martini. Um, we've also got the vermouth, which I've asked you to get in as well. We are only using a very small amount of this. Um, and martini is, is, is a weird one, actually, because I, I asked someone a question about this the other day. It's, it's technically a fortified wine, which is basically made with herbs and botanicals which means once it's open, it does begin to oxidize. So although this is one of those things you've always found in your land's cupboard, it should really be kept properly. When it's when it's opened, it should be kept in the fridge to make it last as long as it can do. You know, we're, we're talking sort of years down the line. Um, but if you are gonna have it, open it up and then keep it, um, you know, stored properly. Um, this is a massive one. I know they do smaller bottles, which would have been probably more relevant to buy with the amount we're gonna use. Um, so we've got our chilled glass. I'm gonna keep that just to the side here. Not that anyone can see much. Uh, we've got our vessel. So we're gonna just put in some ice, good amount right to the top. And I need a bar spoon, which I've got in my van. So I've got a knife. This is what you'll have in your household, one knife. Um, I've got a 
normally I'd use a single strain, but then you do a double strain because we aren't shaking. You're not going to get any small bits of ice to discard. So you're only stirring. So you're in a single strain. So obviously what I found in my drawer is a, a pizza peeler, a pizza slicer. So that's going to fit perfectly in my glass when it comes to taking the drink out. Um, and for my measuring, I have uh, some cooking spoons that I found rather than a jigger, which will do just perfectly. Um, now with the... With my normal measure, what I would normally do is I would put um, anything between say five to 10 mils in the glass here. We stir it round to coat the glass. Obviously the drier you want the martini, the less martini you want to put in. Uh, I'm gonna make a dry style, so we're only in a good look to put in just about five mils in the glass. I'm gonna stir that round, and then we're gonna discard the martini, the martini back out, um, because I still don't want that in there. I just want it to coat the glass, just to give it a nice remnant, and then we're gonna add the spirit in. Um, obviously, all of you have got the same as uh, I have. I don't have a bottle on me. I've got the pouch. So this is around about sort of 40 to 45 mil sample in there. So we are going to work with that rather than doing what I would say is a 75 mil martini. That's generally what you'd always work to is use 75 mils per serve, uh, especially to the five mil measure. Um, because we're going to decant the martini back out, it's not going to ruin it too much um, by having less alcohol. So let's just put the five mils in there. And then take our knife and just give that stir around. Now, when it comes to stirring the uh, the gin, I'm going to work to 30 seconds. When it comes to the vermouth here, I'm going to work to about 20 seconds or so. And I'm just stirring that around the glass. I hope that's not making too much noise as well through the speaker. Okay, and then I'm going to take my potato slicer and just to count. So we're keeping that ice in there because the ice is also coated with the martini. So all we want to do is just strain out the vermouth. And it's not a lot because we can start with five mils. It might seem like it's a little bit more because obviously you've got dilution from the alcohol into the ice. And then once you've had that, take your full measure, as I think most of you have, uh, have kept that there. Put that. All in. And then we will again take your knife and stir that around. And like I said with this one, nice fluid motion and again 30 seconds. And that's just going to create the perfect amount of dilution. So, incidentally, we're making this with uh, Pickering's gin. Uh, and I think Ben will tell you after when he comes on that. His gin, in fact, won the world's best martini. Or I think it might be England's one. It might be world's best martini. Uh, which they went on to uh, Channel 4's Sunday brunch to sort of show off and talk about. And it is, it does make a fabulous martini. Once you've had that, we don't want the ice in the martini, so we will decant that as well. And your glass now is super chilled. And then we're going to take lovely pizza slicer again and then pour that through so that way we don't get any ice coming in obviously it's a shorter measure so it's not going to fill the glass up completely and then for this one i've got a uh, lime peel so it's not going down the route of lemon we're not going down the route of olive Again, we're complementing the botanicals that are in this particular one. So I've just sliced a piece there, just made it a bit prettier by knifing it off. Again, just squeeze the oils into the drink, give it a little twist, and then drop that in. And this is essentially the reason why we've done the martini with the, with the pickerings is because if you're gonna use gin in a cocktail, and especially a navy one at that, one that's got so many botanicals and so much flavor, you don't want to hide that with fruit and everything else that's going on. So when it comes to these really good craft gins, look at the simplistic cocktails. Something like a martini is perfect. The same way if you had a really nice whiskey, you would have an old fashioned. Something that just speaks about the alcohol itself, not about fruity flavors, hiding it and everything. So this is just the perfect cocktail for that. Um, and like I said, yeah, full measure would be 75 mils of your, of your gin. Still the, 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 the 5 to 10 mil serve of vermouth. Obviously, if you want it sweeter, add a touch more vermouth. But I would still recommend to decant that liquid out before you then stir the, uh, the alcohol in. 
uh, strain and then garnish um, again if you know try and work to a, a citrus that's complementing your gin itself um, you know if, if you're always worried you're not too sure stick with your lemon that's fine um, that's great so we will get on to Ben and I will just bring uh, let me just find Jas and I'll bring Jas back in uh, right, she's not there now so I'm just gonna bring Ben in and we'll hopefully have sound <laughs> right ben have we got you yeah i'm here yes yeah <laughs> thank god for that <laughs> uh i've got jazz here as well now as well actually i think it's just heard him come back let me just bring jazz on uh there we are we're all there brilliant right so yeah it was a martini um i mean at this right. point people have had quite a bit of alcohol so <laughs> yeah that's everyone, everyone's good. dying for you ben uh, so nice. to it. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Shane. Great. Um, so obviously on, on the martini front, um, if you want to make a slightly dry martini, then you you lo you use, you know, you straight out your martini completely or your vermouth. If you want to make a slightly wetter martini, then hold some of it back in the glass and mix your gin. But great look, we've got Ben. Thank you very much for joining us. Ben, how are you? Are you with us? I can hear you. But great look, we've got Ben. Thank you very much for joining us, Ben. How are you? I'm very well. Can you hear me in real time? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't don't worry about the time, Ben. I there, can't. There's a lag. But you go we're talk. talking He's normal talking. time. Yeah, yeah we're talking normal talking. time. Don't worry yeah, about the lag. Just turn that volume down. <laughs> I, can't see, I can't see you on the, on the screen. I can't see Jazz. That's fine. We can see you and we can hear you. Okay, but I can't hear you. Oh, you can't oh, hear Jazz? No. Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, just ask, ask Ben, ask ben to, um, to do his thing on the campfire and we'll, we'll go through it with him. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you carry on, Ben, we'll, we'll come off and then you, go, you can talk about the, the, the campfire with one and I'll bring Jazz back in. Okay, no problem. Yeah? Cool. Okay, so hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, sorry about all the technical issues. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, but um, I didn't really even hear what Jas was saying about our gin. But um, for those of you who know us, um, we are um, just based down the road in Tring. For those of you who don't know us, uh, Tring is uh, about five minutes, five minutes, five miles from Tomoka Spirits. And um, we are the producers of the Campfire Gin Range. We've got a London Dry. Uh, this neighbour strength, which we're going to talk about this evening, cask aged and an old Tom. Um, we started back in 2016 and um, we launched with our London Dry. We had a particular demographic that came back to the, um, the distillery um, early in 2017 that wanted something a bit punchier, a bit stronger. Um, and that, uh, that demographic was primarily made up of 70-year-old uh, ladies who had grown up drinking Plymouth Navy Strength gin. So um, we, we kind of, we'd always wanted to do one of these. Um, I see it as the, the epitome of the category. Um, it's a very purist product. Um, and so it was, it, the development was accelerated. Um, it uses the, uh, the same 10 botanicals that appear in our London Dry, um, but in a very different set of ratios and different pretreatments. Um, the London Dry was very much designed um, to, to work as a, uh, as a martini um, and it excelled at that. Um, and as was mentioned earlier, we won the, uh, the world's best martini challenge with the London Dry. Um, we, we've tried some martinis with the, um, with the Navy Strength and uh, we had a couple one night. I think we, we lost a day somewhere. Um, it's quite a punchy product and um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's got a lot of flavor, a lot of, uh, a lot of characteristics to it. Um, the first thing you're probably going to notice on the tasting um, when Jas goes through this is uh, that we've got um, a high level of juniper in there. Um, this is backed up by uh, some botanicals that give us some real kind of fruity, sweet, rich characteristic. Um, so there's rooibos in there. Um, we're using fresh grapefruit and fresh orange as our um, as our lead uh, citrus botanicals. But we've got uh, things like their goldenberry, rooibos, um, 
uh, there's a bit of culinary lavender. And overall, the impact is is quite bold and fruity, but with a sort of a, a, a sweetness and also a bit of spiciness that comes from the uh, the British coriander seed. Um, I don't know, if Jas, if you want to um, go through and do a tasting now. Ben, I'm going to let you take us through it. Yeah? <laughs> I love live. Okay, I can do it. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to come in. So, ben, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> just yeah. talking for Jas. Um, I think Jas is saying, do you want to take people through it? Have you got stuff there to take people through? Yeah, I can do. Yeah, well, let's do a tasting. Yeah, if you, if you take them through it, then yeah, yeah. Um, I'll bring no, Jess back on after. The only problem is I can't see people's reactions, but I'll just go through it nice and steady. I, I, can, I can put the posts in to, to you and see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay so we're going to go through a um, we're going to go through a tasting on this now, um, and basically, as with the others, um, it's it's a case of uh, taking it steady, really. Um, we um, we'll start off. I've got a I've got a glass here um, and a bottle. Of course, we're not short on those. Um, so, if you do as before, just with a small amount into a into a glass, um, circulate it around, get some air into that glass, allow some of those initial um, higher alcohols to evaporate off. And what you're probably going to notice on the nose is um, is juniper, red fruit. Um, and the citrus coming through. So um, breathe it in, and, um, and and take a small sip. When we when we do our tastings, we tend to kind of suggest that people take a couple of sips each time. So the first one is really just to get your mouth used to the alcohol. Um, and uh, once uh, once you know you've got through sort of five seconds of that lingering in your palate, swallow and then take another sip, and you'll find that different flavours start to come through. You'll notice different flavours on different parts of your tongue as well. So things like the richer, more juniper, rooibos, golden berry characteristics will pick up on the middle of your tongue, um, whereas you'll get the lighter, more citrus thing um, characteristics on the uh, on the edge of your tongue. So um, so take a take a sip and um, don't fall over. You should also get with this one um, a bit of spice coming through. Um, we use British coriander seed. Um, and the reason we use British is because A, limited air miles. And, um, and B, um, it's a really great product. Uh, it's got a lovely citrus forward, high limonene content to it. Um, and also the guys that, that cultivate it um, are, um, one of them is a beekeeper. And what they do is they actually, um, they put hives um, in the fields that are adjacent to where they're growing the coriander seed, um, and so it helps um, it helps maintain a, a bee populace, which is something that um, fits in really nicely with our environmental ethos. Um, we have um, <laughs> I see a comment there that we can't smell anything anymore from Emma. Um, you'll do fine. You'll do fine. I'm sure. I don't know whether anybody also um, gets a little bit of um, sort of slight sherbety sweetness. Um, sweetness is a characteristic that we, we, we try and get into the gin. There's no sugar in there at all, um, but it comes through the choice of botanicals. And things like um, the roasted hazelnut um, really do help contribute to that. Um, if anybody's worried about nut in gins, don't be. Um, allergens are um, bound into heavyweight proteins, which actually do not come over. Um, in the distillation process. Um, a lot of people are unaware of this, but quite happily will drink uh, gins that um, do contain nuts and they shouldn't cause you any issues at all. Um, now, we have got some tonic to pair with this. I don't have all of the, um, all of the garnishes that um, Jas has sent you, um, but the tonic pairing we're using is um, from Franklin and Sons. And um, I think really uh, our, our view, um, which is also shared by Jas and Shane, is that um, Navy Strength gins uh, 
you know, they've got some big, bold characteristics. Um, they, they're very difficult to create and very difficult to get smooth. Um, and we actually have two different stills. We use a smaller still for the Navy Strength Gin. The yield is less. Um, and when it comes to creating cocktails, um, they are, um, they're going to cut through anything. Now, gin and tonics um, really can go from being very simple, beautiful things with a nice classic gin and a very simple tonic to a heavily flavored gin and a heavily flavored tonic. And, and the, the latter is what we're doing here. Um, so we're pairing um, Franklin and Sons uh, rosemary and black olive uh, tonic with this. Now, Franklin and Sons suggest that this should go with a more Mediterranean style gin, but I think... Um, uh, these heavier flavor tonics always require gin that's got a bit of guts. Um, and rosemary is often cited as a good botanical um, to, or a good garnish um, to go with this, uh, to go with gins full stop. Um, rosemary really helps enhance juniper and, and that certainly works in, in the case of this gin. Uh, garnish wise, uh, I think you've been supplied with some grapefruit and, um, the, the reason that we suggest grapefruit on this one is that although there are some nice citrus notes going on, as, as, as people have noticed on the feed, um, the, it, it's a lot less citrus forward than, say, for example, our London Dry. Um, and again, that's because we want those bolder characteristics to cut through. So to give a sharper uh, or a better balance, um, we, we do suggest maybe using grapefruit as a, uh, as a garnish with this. Um, now, if you want to get really fancy, um, then grapefruit wheel cut in half, sprinkled with a little bit of demerara sugar, and then use a brulee torch on that just to caramelize it, and then drop that in. And that will just, just kind of break out all of those citrus flavors. You'll get those lovely kind of slightly burnt sugar notes in there as well. So three-part cocktail, very, very, very simple. Um, and for, for me, that's how they should be, um, keeping them very, very simple and ideally very, very boozy. Um, so uh, just, there's a note there, Franklin, um, Franklin and Sons, uh, for those that didn't hear that properly. Um, so Franklin and Sons, rosemary and black olive uh, tonic is what we're using. Um, I don't know if we want to go back to Jas or Shane now for any comments. Um, there's a note there, not just the zest as I'm, uh, you can use just the zest if you wish. So just zest and twist, or, um, I'm not quite sure what format you've got your grapefruit in, but if it's, if it's a slice, then you could just drop that in. I've got the same issue with Jas now, so I'm going to get his mic sorted and I'll bring him on. <laughs> okay. All right. Can anybody still hear me? If you just type a, a comment in the YouTube column. Yeah, we're just doing the reset on Jasses. Uh, everyone can still hear you, Ben, so that's okay. fine. Yes, yeah, so if you just want to maybe uh, chat a bit more about Sue or something, I'll just get him sorted and I'll bring him on. Okay, all right. I, 
folks, we um, there's some other technical difficulties going on here, so um, we're just going to get those sorted out. In the meantime, um, so we've got the, um, the the London Dry, sorry, the London Dry, the Navy Strength here, and um, basically, um, as I say, we um, we launched this in 2017, um, early 2017. It won Gin of the Year at the London Filling Expo. Um, and um, and that was in 2017, and then it picked up a uh, silver outstanding um, at the IWSC. Um, the the lovely folks over at Gin Foundry cite this as one of the best Navy strength gins that they've tried. So it's 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 gaining some recognition, um, and, and hopefully we'll soon produce a little bit more of it than we we currently do. Um, the challenge is always just kind of getting a gin where you've packed in a lot of flavour. Um, and getting that balance with the uh, with the fifty percent, fifty seven percent. Sorry, um, I can see a lot of you are enjoying the the combination of the um, of the tonics. Um, cocktail wise, this works really well because um, obviously you've got a high ABV. Um, if you want a really good knockout Negroni, um, then this works absolutely beautifully. Um, just just Carpano Antico Formula Vermouth. Um, uh, uh, Campari, and then we always tend to drop in just a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters as well, um, which which work beautifully. Um, we've also got a signature serve called the Red Admiral, um, so uh, it's another naval theme going on there. Red Admiral uh, uses port and apple juice as the two other base liquids, um, and it's garnished with a, uh, a slither of ginger, um, and we serve that in a martini glass um, with the uh, the gin and the um, apple juice pre-mixed um, and that actually floats on top of the port um, with the ginger resting on the side of the glass the port soaks up the ginger and slowly goes from that, that kind of sort of light creamy color to a lovely pink um, and it is a you know chew it at the end of the uh, end of the drink it's, it's a lovely combination um, so i think i can see jas back up on one of the screens here yes yeah, hello mate so, go back to you that was amazing. Love it. Thank you very much. Um, just want to thank you for that. Um, and that, that worked really well, that combination of, of the tonic that you put, the Franklin Brilliant. and Sun, uh, worked really nicely. And you know what? Yeah, I need to have this as a Negroni because I love Negronis <laughs> and I know this would work amazingly. It's yeah, so fun. thank you for that. Thanks for that. Um, and um, everyone, that was that was Ben from Campfire Gin. Some great comments as well. People are loving it. Good. Loving that combination. So, yeah, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Stay with us because we'll bring you back at the end. Will do. Cheers. All right. So, guys, yeah, obviously a few technical issues. Never happened before, but typical. There you go. Um, so, look, I hope you all really like that particular one. Uh, that was a campfire. We're going to move on to number four, our fourth gin of the evening. Um, and this is the um, 2017 world's best gin. Uh, this is a Tarquin's Sea Dog. Uh, Tarquin's are based down in Cornwall. Um, they've been going for maybe 2013, something like that. Uh, really good story behind Tarquin's, but um, obviously we're, we're running a little bit behind. So uh, we've been joined today. I actually asked Tarquin if he could make it, but it's his wife's birthday. So he said to me, I'm going to uh, introduce our head of sales, Mark, who actually, and this is Tarquin's words, Mark knows more about Tarquin's gin than Tarquin himself. So you've got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> but, um, let's hope, hope we have no technical issues. Mark, can you hear us? Oh, no, I can't hear you. <laughs> right, Shane, you might have to um, drop me out and let uh, Mark come in. Oh, I'm back. Uh, okay, so Tarquin's gin. Um, again, this is seven fifty-seven percent yeah, on the nose. Do a quick reset, and I'll bring him back in. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, it's oh, Tarquin's gin. Again, Tarquin's gin. Fifty-seven um, percent. Name the Sea Dog because he went, made it for one of the uh, Navy um, fleets. Um, yeah, are you with us? No. Oh, yeah, I think hey. I yeah, you are cool. Can nice you, one. Can you hear me? everybody? Yeah, I can. I uh, can. Cool. I've, weirdly, I've what? got the um, I've got the YouTube thing up as well, so I'm going to take that down. 
because it's really <laughs> strange. <laughs> but um, yeah, cool. So look, everybody, this is Mark. Um, Mark, this is everybody. Um, and I'm going to let Mark kind of take us through Sea Dog, and um, and then hopefully you've seen how we do it. But you know, do your own thing. Do do the tasting how you would normally want to do it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Cool, nice. Um, cool, thanks everyone. It's really really good to be here. Um, nice to. It's really strange every time I do. I haven't done one of these for ages actually, and it's quite odd to to be doing it and not not be able to see anyone. But anyway, hopefully this works quite well. Um, so as Jazz was saying, yeah, um, yeah, I'm up from Tarquins. Um, the company is actually Southwestern Distillery. Um, we actually do, uh, so we predominantly make gin, um, which you've seen. Um, we actually make a pasties as well. Um, and we've also got a, uh, we've got another spirit coming out soon, end of this month. Um, so actually I can just tell you. Um, we've got a, uh, we've got a spice rum um, coming out. Uh, which is the it is the end of May. We'll be bringing that out. So, so keep an eye on what we're doing. That's quite fun. Maybe hopefully we can do a uh, we can do a tasting on here as well. Um, so we started uh, in 2012. Um, we kind of say so the, the company started 2012, but um, the we we started selling 2013. Um, I'm quite lucky. Um, I started 2014. I was actually. Uh, I was Tarquin's first employee. Um, I started off just pedaling it out the back of my car. Um, hello, everyone. I'm just looking at your comments. Hello. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, setting it out the back of my car. And we're, we're super lucky. I mean, we, we started with um, our Cornish Dry, which was similar, to, obviously, to this bottle, but a blue top. Um, and we had pasties, as I said. Um, and then we brought out a, we brought the Sea Dog out, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, <clears throat> and then we have a few other products as well. Um, so we do some flavored gin. So our first one we did was um, a blackberry and honey, which is really cool. Um, that one is kind of like, um, I mean, we, we did that. It's like a drier profile, that one. Um, so when it was about three, three years ago, three, four years ago, God, um, that we brought that one out. And it's about the time flavored gin started coming around um, and people kind of wanted us to do, they asked if we were going to do a slow gin, that type of thing. Um, but we wanted to do something slightly different. So again, we did the blackberry and honey. The honey's from um, from Polzeth, um, which is just down the road to the distillery. So again, quite a fun thing. We don't put sugar in that. We put honey in that to sweeten it. Um, and then we have two other uh, fruit gins. We do a rhubarb. And we do a strawberry as well. Um, and then again, we've got some other stuff coming out towards maybe like two months time. We've got a couple of other different flavors that we're kind of like mucking around with. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of us, um, uh, in terms of what we do. So we're tasting obviously Navy strength gin. So we're tasting, uh, sea dog. Um, we called it, I heard, I heard jazz say, we called it the sea dog. So how this one came around, um, was I don't, I don't, um, expect you guys to know, but there's a, there's a naval base, um, down right down the bottom in Cornwall, um, called cold rose. Um, and they um, approached us and said, would you make, so this is when we kind of like first started, um, they said, would you make a, a Navy strength gin for us? So they had a, a squadron called the 771 Squadron um, that was being disbanded. Um, they were like a search and rescue seeking um, squadron. And they said, look, would you come and make a Navy strength gin for us? And we were like, yep, cool, we'll do that. Um, something we wanted to play around with. So we made 771 bottles of that, um, kind of gave half to them sold half as well um and we just had such a really really good response from it that we thought oh bugger it we'll just we just keep going um so yeah we we kept it kept it going and it, it did really really well um we always downplay it but we actually in 2017 we entered it um into the san francisco spirit awards so we won world's best gin in that one um which is amazing we're, we're super stoked with that um in terms of gin um i think everyone kind of win wins awards um, there's kind of two main competitions though. So you have the, the San Francisco Spirit Awards, which is like a really big one. Um, and then you have one, um, called the IWSC as well, which is in London. Um, so the San Fran's was like a, it's kind of like the Oscars of it all. Um, there were 280 gins blind tasted, um, in 2017. And, um, this one won overall, which we were really, really happy with. I still remember when Tarquin told me actually, it was at a, at a trade show. And um, he kind of like just uh, again, it's it's odd. It's really sh it's a shame you can't see him um, because he's he's uh, he's a fun guy. He's like similar age to me. So he's thirty two. Um, he's really kind of like pretty chill, pretty laid back. Um, 
but uh yeah I, mean, I remember him ringing me up and just being like oh you know hi how are you doing um i've got some news we entered the the, the gins of the san francisco spirit awards and we're like oh great cool he's like oh it won um one world's best gin so we were kind of just like whoa that's 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 amazing so um yeah we're super proud of it um and what we did is it's kind of like um yeah it's really cool um it's one of my favorite anyway i'm blabbing on um it's really hard not to not to do it without seeing you all so i reckon we we try it um straight up so um so in this one excuse me i should probably talk about a little bit what goes in it um so in our dress is a very similar um profile to our was well, the same botanicals excuse me as our dry so in our cornish dry what we put in there we have um three different um citrus fruits in there so we have um lemon orange and grapefruit in there and we just use the peel we don't use the fruit um so in terms of this one what we've done is we up the amount of orange in this um so i always find let's, let's give it a swig i reckon um when i taste it i get loads and loads of orange from it that's what i get so that's one of the main things we get so we up the amount of orange in there um there's another botanical we, we whack in um we put violets in these in this one as well um you probably won't get it as much sorry i'm reading your <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, so, Sarah, yeah, there are. I think, so we were the first, um, <laughs> uh, we were the first uh, distillery to make a, um, a, like an English, a British pastis. I think there's another one now as well. Um, but in terms of the pastis as well, I will get into this, I promise. Um, but we ours is slightly different, so it's a bit drier. Um, so, um, if for people that don't know, and again, apologies if you do know, I'm not trying to like teach you stupid things or but a, a pastis is um so it's it's a different thing it's not a gin it's made in a similar way um but it's um it's an aniseed spirit so similar to like um so you would know like perno or rica that sort of thing that's that's what pastis is um and ours um so all of the um the majority of pastis people try they have loads of sugar in um but ours doesn't have that sugar in so it's a lot drier i remember i took it over i went to um i went to nice like four years ago um visiting and um I took it into a bar. I thought it'd be really fun. I, I, I kind of like nabbed a bottle to go um, to, to take with me. And um, I, t I took it in. I was like, oh, hi, how are you doing? Um, I was like, oh, I used to, I work for a gin company and we make a pasty. So you guys might like it. Um, and they, they kind of chucked me out. They, they weren't super stoked with it. So, um, so yeah, don't basically the tell of that story is don't, um, don't take, don't take English pasties to France. Anyway, sorry, I'm blabbing on. Let's try it. Let's try some gin. Um, so in this, like I said, lemon, orange, grapefruit, main citrus in there. Um, and then we put violets in there. Now, this has different juniper in than our dry. So in our dry, the blue bottle, we use Italian juniper. Um, in this one, actually, we use Kosovan. Um, so Italian juniper, I find, is um, it, it's, it's a little bit more citrusy in there, whereas the Kosovan is a little bit more, um, it's a bit more loud. It's a bit more spicy and you need that because obviously this has got like a bunch more alcohol in there. Um, I, again, apologies, I missed Jazz talking about um, all the other gins, but um, I don't know if you know, like I remember when I was learning about Navy Strength gins, I, I, basically how they're made, If I, how we do it is we have a pot still. So we make our gins, so we put our, in our pot still we put spirit and then we put, so it's about 96% um, about proof spirit and we put water in there and then we add our botanicals and we macerate them. And then what you do is you heat your, your still up to, um, so it's, uh, it's 78 degrees we heat ours up to. Um, so it's a bit of physics for you, but um, alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. So we heat that. Um, alcohol boils, water doesn't, you get all the flavours from. It goes up this kind of, goes up your still, goes up a funnel and down like a, um, it's called a swan neck, into, um, into a condenser, which is filled with cold water, condenses, the, um, condenses the, the hot kind of like spirit, and it comes out as gin. Now, it comes out quite a high proof, right? So if we were making our London dry, what we would do is we add water to it to get it down to 42%, whereas this one, all we do is add less water. So a lot of people, when they're kind of like, if I'm doing these and they, they want to taste um, like gins, you always get a little bit kind of fixated with the ABV. They think it's, oh, God, 57% is a little bit scary. Um, but I, I wouldn't, like, massively worry about that. Think of it as kind of like a cordial, so it's a little bit more concentrated. Um, so you'll get loads of those, I find, anyway, you get loads of those more flavour, and you pick up different characteristics. So I reckon let's let's have a go. So I've had this one in, in here for a bit. So good smell, um, and then down the old hatch. 
Don't spill it like I did. Mm. Ah, see. Ah, I really, I love this. Okay, so what I find straight away, if I was tasting like a, like a London Dry or something like that, I find this, like a Navy Strength. Um, I always get. It's more. It's a weird thing to say, but I get like it's almost like creamy. Like it kind of um. It almost it coats your palate, and the whole reason behind that is the fact that it's more alcohol in this. So it's like I said, you, and alcohol's heavier than water, so you get that it kind of like hits your palate a lot more. I get lots of cinnamon, like like really like earthy kind of like notes from that. Um, I always pick up. I get loads of orange from this. I think it's really nice. It's like um, it's like orange blossom from this. It's, it's pro- predominantly what I pick up. I think it's delicious. And then you get some of the juniper as well. So I said slightly different juniper in this. If we use our Italian juniper, I think it would just get a little bit lost. So you need something like a little bit heavier so you can kind of like get rid of all those um, all those alcohol flavours because that kind of can, sometimes can be. With certain Navy strengths, um, I never like down talk any brands. I think it's always everyone's got like super interesting different flavours. Um, <laughs> this is a great gin. Cool. Thank you very much, Anthony. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, I get... Yeah, yeah, like loads, loads of, um, loads of like really nice, like juniper, orange. Um, I get cinnamon from this as well. And like that kind of really cool, creamy kind of like taste. Does anyone else pick up anything out like fun that you want to write in? Um, you don't have to, don't mind. We can just kind of like taste it like this. Um, I think in terms of like pairings as well, um, I was looking at how the other guys do it. So um, there's a couple of different ways. I think you have a, do you have like a light tonic water with this one? Um, I've I've only got I've got Fever Tree Med. Um, that's what I'm going to drink with this. There's a couple of different things we can do though. Um, Mediterranean's great, so light tonic water is really good. I always really like that for when you when you taste gins because I think you get um, just got some light and warmth, cinnamon, nutmeg. Nice, Sarah. Good work, good work. She knows. Um, with different tonic water, excuse me. Um, I always think it's really good whenever you're 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 tasting something new. Always to use like a lighter like version because I think often with a bunch of tonic waters you can just get they, they a lot of flavored ones now just kind of really take up the flavor of your gin um so like a locale or like i really like mediterranean so if people don't know um we, we do a lot of work with fever tree i think they're really great um and this one has got it's got half the amount of quinine in quinine's what makes tonic water bitter um so it works really well and it, it kind of like lets the, lets the gin talk rather than kind of like the tonic water that makes any sense they also do fever tree do a, an aromatic tonic water um which works really really well that's really nice as well light tonic water cool nice licorice yes licorice. yes yes well done emma so um i didn't talk about that so we do put licorice in there um we put licorice root and there's more licorice in this so we have the licorice in the dry as well but in the um in the in the sea dog we actually put a little bit more as well yeah orange yeah nice one that nice one emma um, talking about orange, is, I, I don't know if I, I was actually going to make one, but I, I, I didn't bring the right stuff. This is banging in the Negroni. Like it's, it makes for for me. Whenever I'm making Negroni, I absolutely love this. I just, I just don't think there's another. My go-to Negroni is this. I'm always pretty gin heavy with it anyway. Um, for, so for my Negroni, I would always do probably like a shot and a half of uh, of gin. So I, I usually use Sea Dog, um, and then obviously I kind of like dull down the Campari and the Vermouth because I just really like gin. So I think it's really nice. Um, but that's my go-to drink with this. But sh- we could try it with, with tonic as well. So we whack a load in. And I think, I don't know what garnish you guys have with this. Um, apologies. What would be really great if you still have some um, would be a slice of orange. It's really cool in this. But don't worry if you don't. Um, I always say, whenever you're tasting, again, any gin, um, there's no right or wrong answer, really. I can kind of tell you like what I would have with it, but it's, it's really up to you. So if you want to whack, if you've got peppercorns, whack peppercorns in it. I don't like it because that kind of stuff gets in my teeth and I'm never into that. But put whatever you like in. For me though, what w- works really well with this is orange and rosemary. So that's what I do for my g and um, Orange, perfect, great. Um, and if you've got a little bit of rosemary, it works really nicely. Kind of like smoky rosemary is really good. Um, but... I should have bought some orange, but I didn't. We can pretend they've got orange in there. So. Uh, again, as well with tonic water, don't whack loads of it in there. I do like um, equal measures. I know that sounds probably like a little bit, a bit too much, a bit too hardcore maybe. But um, I think th- you want to taste the gin, don't you? So okay, here we go. Oh, 
Ugh. See, I, I really like this. I think it's really good. Um, I get loads more orange coming from that as well. Like I, again, that comes through a lot more for me. You also notice as well, I don't know if anyone brought it up, might go slightly cloudy. It's not a bad thing, so don't worry. It's called louching. Um, and what that means is you're basically, when you're adding kind of like anything to it, or it would happen with water as well. If it goes cloudy, it basically means it's just releasing essential oils. We were talking about pastis. Um, that we, uh, excuse me, sorry. Um, the person who's asking, I don't have C C J W B A orange zest or orange slice. Yeah, I always go slice, um, but it's up to you. Um, I, I would have a slice. I like the sweetness of an orange slice. I think that's really, really good. I like if you leave it in there. Um, I think that's nice. But it, it, again, it's entirely up to you. Sometimes I think if you just use the zest, it gets a little bit bitter, whereas you get that really nice sweetness from the, the actual fruit in there. So I think that's really good. That's that's my personal preference. Though. That's what I go for. Um, excuse me. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I was thinking if it goes cloudy. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, uh, I would. I, I, what it means is you're you're releasing essential oils, and uh, what, as I was saying, with, with our with our gins, what we do is we use fresh fruit in there. We don't use dried, and we use the peel. Um, not, again, not the fruit, and the peel is where you get all of the like the rind stuff. Is where you get all the oils from. So that's the reason why um, you get that kind of cloudiness. So you, I wouldn't worry if, if you ever got. Usually, you, you do have it with Navy Strength gins um, because you've got you've got more of the um, the alcohol, more of the the flavors and stuff like that going in there rather than the water taken away. So, um, Vicky, this is bad gin. I love Tarquins. Mm. Also love the little bottles. I have one. Mm. Uh, I got one for my birthday. Good work. Nice. Um, so yeah, I've got other things to say about this. The problem when I do these, see, is that I just absolutely blab on. Oh, right. Yeah. Our bottle, as you can see, um, so we're kind of known for our wax strip. Whereas the, um, so what we do, so every single bottle, um, how we make these um, is we've got, you would never believe it as well, but we've got slow cookers. So for these, how this is made, a lot of people think it's kind of just like a mold put on, but what we do, we get the wax in blocks and we heat it up in slow cookers and we hand it every single bottle. And every bottle as well is hand signed. I don't know if you can see it. But they've got hand take. They've got hand signed tasting notes on every single one of the batch batch number. Um, so the reason why people always ask me this doesn't have a wax strip on it um, was when we first started. As I said, we did this for the seven seven one squadron. Um, when we first did it, we actually left them with wax strips on it, and we had um, we had a, a cease and desist letter from Maker's Mark. Does anybody know what Maker's Mark is? It's that bourbon, and um, they have a big wax strip on it. And um, yeah, they they kind of they wanted to sue us for it. So unfortunately, at that particular moment in time, we couldn't really, we didn't have the cash to fight them. So this bowl, actually, we, we kind of, we, we chipped all the, um, so we got rid of all the wax strips. So how we do this one um, is we, we dunk it in the wax and we put in cold water straight away after. So this is actually, it's a, it's a massive pain to make. It's a lot more um, labor intensive. Um, but that's quite a nice little fact about this. Um, I'm going to read some more of your comments. Rose me winning, nice and Emma. Uh, good with the zest, yeah, it's lovely, lovely to dissipate on the The stable, yeah, so um, Glenn's asking about the stable gins. So we do a bunch of um, limited edition gins as well. Um, so we have our core range and then um, we uh, we have like, um, we kind of work with some individual, we actually work with Tomoka, we made one for Tomoka uh, about maybe like two, three years ago. Jazz will, Jazz will probably tell you. Yeah, um, but, um, we do like a bunch of limited edition ones. One of my favorites is Stein's, um, which is, so we do uh, one for Rick Stein, um, which is only available for, for them. Um, we okay. put it on our site recently um, because uh, obviously with all the lockdown and stuff like that, it's a bit of a nightmare. So we've got some of these like limited edition stuff so that we can't just whack in online to, to sell. Um, but I'm trying to think about other ones we did. We did a Crocus gin, which is really fun. Um, that's with um, Cornish Saffron in, so that's great. Um, and we do, I don't know why, but mine's gone completely blank. Um, we do a, uh, we do one for the Eden Project, which is really fun. Um, Jazz, when do you use the lemongrass? I don't know. I wouldn't use lemongrass in this, potentially. But that, again, that's up to you. If you, if you want to wax some lemongrass, then go for it. Big shout. Someone, I think someone wrote, like, Elliot, like, uh, Elliot, they, they knew Elliot as well. He's a good guy. Yeah, whoever knows him. 
he's he's a bloke that works for us as well. Um, but that's only for a niche <laughs> niche part of whoever's listening. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, I don't know what what else to say. Does anyone want to come in and save me and help me instead of like blabbing about this? Can, can you uh, see I me? Brought, I have brought Jasmine. Well, I'm not sure you can hear him. I can, no, I can't hear him. No, I can hear you though. You can hear me. Yeah. I can't hear you, Jas. I'm going to bring you out and then bring you back in. Hopefully, it might trip it in. Um, I think everyone else can hear Jas, though. I think it might just be a thing between you Maybe guys. Maybe my like weird thing. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can I can hear, hear you fine. Yeah. yeah, Mark, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Mark. Cool. Thank you very much. That was amazing, Chris. Uh, who uh, is that? So um, please do blood orange and lavender again. Oh, so that was the blood orange and lavender one. Was that? Did we do that one for you? Was that? Yes. You guys yeah, that was before, right. isn't it? Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Um, Mark, Anthony, Mark, Anthony, Mark, I won't be happy we're really doing a blood orange gin. Um, I think that's probably going to be our end, like June. Um, so that we're gonna, that's going to be a little bit different because we did a um, for Tomoka, we did it was like a London Dry kind of style, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Whereas mm. the blood orange we're doing, um, it's going to be out World Gin Day if um, if I'm right. Um, it, sh- it should be, um, but that's going to be a little bit more fruity and more kind of like um, more like Aperol root that kind of thing. Um, so, okay. so it's going to be a little bit more bitter. That's like, so ideally, what we're kind of trying because there's already like blood orange gins out there, so we didn't want to do the same thing. Um, so we're going to want to try and do almost like a spritzy one that you have with soda. Um, so that kind of like a little bit, like a little bit more bitter. Yeah. So that should be out soon as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, because nice. we've got a diehard regular there, Anthony, who he's, he he loved the blood orange lavender. Keeps moaning at me to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> We can, we can talk about it after this. It was a really nice one. It was really yeah. Good. No, it was actually. It was very yeah. good, and, and actually, it didn't last long. That flew out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did. You did. You sold those, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think I've still got a bottle. Actually, I might. Oh really? No, I don't, I don't I even think, think we have. We we've, we we normally keep one of our special editions, but I don't think we've got a dollar orange lemon left. I always I, um, I always try and keep one of them at least. I've got. I think I try and do like one of it, but then it'll be a night like tonight, and I'll just crack it open and drink it anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with lockdown. Everyone's going through stuff. Yeah, just <laughs> smash through it. You try and keep it by, and then you end up going through it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you can still hear Jas. So. Um, what I might just do... Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take you out, Jas. I'm just going to thank the guys. I'll bring them both on, and then I'll bring you back in, if that's okay. Just so it means that obviously everyone can hear me. I'll just grab Ben, who's uh, there, and I'm hoping that we can hear Ben. Ben, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's it. That's fantastic. Um, appreciate all of you guys for, for coming on. Um let us know, guys, what your, your favourite was. Not to put you on the spot, because I've got both of them here. <laughs> not to, not to uh, get you in trouble or anything. But um, it, it's weird, actually, because I really love... I've always been a massive fan of Tarquins. And I love I love the, the Sea Dog and, and its shrimp. But i I got to say, the Navy from Campfire with, with that Franklin's tonic, I've not had that before. That's a, that's a really nice combination of, of uh, gin and tonic. Um just just very it's, it's got that savory element which i really like i love that kind of savory style um a nice sweetness to it it's, it's fantastic absolutely fantastic thank you um but you know like i said all the gins tonight actually were really um you know fabulous gins um and uh, yeah once again guys thank you very much for for giving up your time uh, i apologize to everyone for the, the technical issues that's just um the joys of life <laughs> Am I still live on this? Can yeah, you're, you're yeah, still you're live. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, so I, can, we, I, don't, I don't ever think there's a right or wrong answer. I always think we're like when you say what's your favorite gin, because yeah. I think the, great, the great thing about gin is the fact that there's so many different, you know, so many different like variations and things like that. So there's never like a oh, this is definitely the best or this one isn't. I think it's what you like, and I think it's really interesting to see to try all like the different stuff. And I think that's what's great about our category and spirits, isn't it? There's no like. Oh yeah, to answer for sure. So, and I think that's why you have such a huge base of of, of people, such as our, our clients here, that collect gins. You mm-hmm. know, um, you, you go into most people's houses now, and they have a range of craft gins on the on the. That is, it's almost, it's almost like they're embarrassed if they've just got Gordon's up on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there has to be a range of really good gins, um, and the same if you're having house parties. But I mean, obviously not now in 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 the current life climate. But when you had guests over, you know, the days of having Prosecco on arrival are gone. You know, it's, it's a great gin and tonic now. And people mm-hmm. love to see what people have in. 
um, that they may not have if they live far away, something that's a local gin. Um, so that is, it, yeah, it's really, 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 really good. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks a lot again. Uh, I really do appreciate the time. Uh, you know, every time we try and get people on just to really so people can, you know, buy into that gin and buy, you know, for the person behind it um, and the effort that people put in to make these gins. Um, they're not, you know, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, they are, you know, everyone thinks they are generally easy to make gin compared to whiskey, uh, but it's not. It all starts, you know, from an idea, then the recipe, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error uh, until they get the right product. Um, and then you have something fabulous come to the shelf. So, um, yeah, appreciate the time and effort to, to talk us through that, guys. Um, and I will bring Jas back on, but I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear him. So, um, are we, are we done? So, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Good night. Uh, and I'm going to bring Jas back in. Yeah, and we have Jas. Who? Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just, yeah. I don't think Mark can hear you, so I there's no point having you on there at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just looking at some of the comments that anyone say. So we've got Mandy, that like the Pickerins. Yeah, Pickerins was fantastic. Uh, the Martini was too much for me because I can feel it in my head already. Uh, that's just, that's gone. Um, we got uh, loads of fans for Tarp Greens, loads of fans for Campfire, which is great. Um, Vicky, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, like I said, again, apologies for the um, the tech issues on this. Um, it's not ideal. We don't like it. We like to be a bit, a bit more polished. Um, but it's just sometimes we, we, we try it as well. We, we always go on earlier in the day and we do a test run. Everyone works fine. And then by the time you come to do it, it's just sort of something that always happens. But it doesn't matter. You've got alcohol in your hands. Nothing's ever going to go wrong. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, also, um, I don't know how much people are paying attention. A lot of ladies are loving Mark. Um, <laughs> yeah. They'd be called Mark Queens, not Tar Queens. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> people loved it. Um, so, especially Emma. Especially Emma. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was good, though, yeah. No, I he, think Emma didn't care about the gin after. <laughs> I didn't care about the gin. It was gin number four. That, you know, by that time, they were gone. Doesn't matter. Um, but look, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Um, we just want to say, obviously, the money, some of the ticket money we raised from all these tastings go to charity. So from the last couple of weeks, thanks to you guys and, and you buying these tickets, we've managed to raise £400 for food bank charities, which goes directly to the food bank. So we know that it's directly helping people. Um, so that's down to you guys supporting us in these tastings. So thank you very much. Um, and... Shane, all these gins are 10% off discount on our website? Uh, no, not yet, because uh, we've still got issues with that. So just anyone that wants a discount, just uh, DM us uh, or email us. Uh, that's the best way. Most of the people I got through emails this uh, last week. Uh, so, yeah, if you any gins from today, you get 10% off. Just drop us a DM for any of the socials um, or an email to the craft or to Mocha sites, and we will arrange that for you uh, and get that sent out to you if you're further afield or we'll deliver it locally. Uh, if, if, if you know us. Uh, there was a question about the lemongrass. Uh, the lemongrass was actually meant to be used in the Pickering gin, um, but because we went with the martini, I, can't, I kind of forgot, so that's, that's my fault. Um, but the lemongrass with the Pickering and the lime is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so if you still have some left, give that a go. If you don't, buy a bottle and, and try it. Um, it was very good. Coming up next week, we've just launched more tickets for the rum night, yeah? Next, next Saturday? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so we sold out provisionally of, of what we had available for rum night next Saturday. Uh, we've got some really good rums. We're going to be joined by a couple of guests as well. Um, and so we've launched, we've released another maybe 10, I think, 10 tickets. Uh, we've got 16. 16 has been released for the rum. OK, I think I think if you have gone, so we might be down to 10. OK. Oh, yes. No, you're right. You're right. There is. So there's not many left. Uh, we will keep an eye on it. Uh, we have to kind of release it in blocks. Uh, to make sure we have enough bottles to satisfy. So if that sells again and there's still demand, potentially we will release more. Um, there's no guarantee of that. So if you do want to get in on it, you know, get in as soon as you can. The gin, like I said, anyone that's bought today that wasn't on our mailing list, they people, people have had access all week long for this. So 50% of the tickets have already gone for the summer gin. Um, so if, you haven't, if you're not on the mailing list, you know, drop us a message. We can put you on that as well. Um, but you know, jump online and, and get that. 
and um we have i think the we've also got swedish whiskey that's still tickets left on that so if you want um any whiskey tasting for the swedish that is on the 16th of may and tickets are still available online um for that one as well um we are in the process of getting other tastings together and then you know you'll be notified by email as soon as they um yeah as soon as they go live basically mark is yeah. asking for a tequila tasting so we'll try and do that uh if there's well, enough great people, yeah just the tequila we're happy to go ahead um as long as you get the people it's, it's all good yeah tequila's um, on my street actually that'd be a good one get some nice yeah, mezcal as well nice good so guys thank you very much for joining us um i know we've sort of gone on a bit longer than we than we thought but hey ho um hopefully you've enjoyed it <laughs> and, and we want to see you on our next tasting as well um remember percentage of ticket money does go to charity so we, you know we're, we are helping people uh when we do these so good uh that's that's enough for me i guess yeah guys thank you very much um always great to have you here we honestly we're really thankful for the support um and we'll keep doing it as long as um this lockdown carries on and actually into the future after i think it's it's working out as a great concept which i think people really get behind um you know and it, yeah there's there's not just gin there's loads of different spirits uh we've got cognac in the works as well so that's going to be announced um but you know gin seems to be the most popular at the moment so we're going to keep you know storming them out just again a reminder of that summer gin tasting so it's not just about uh, gin and tonics we're going to match uh, gin with a tonic then an alternative serve and then we're going to do a couple of cocktails so it's a little bit different um you get into that summer mood i know we've hit a bit of bad weather again this week but the sun's going to come back um and then we're going to go through some great uh, summer gin cocktails um i'm going to leave you today with um something i want to put on earlier but it was we got all lost in the tech issues so um pickering's undoubtedly have one of the best sites out there if you ever go and check out the pickering site for their gin it's a really really polished site um and they actually got a video on here which i've, I've downloaded so i'm going to finish off with just leaving that video on there which just shows some of the process that they do um as a team for the gin um but that will kind of ease us out to say goodbye uh just make sure there's no comment yeah everyone's saying goodbye so that's brilliant um and we'll see you guys um really really soon <laughs>